Hi, this is Tracy Eaton from Remarkable Franchises and welcome to this edition of Franchise Conversations. So I've got the great pleasure of having with me today Jessica Jessica Morfitt, who's an accountant from Walker Wayland WA. And Walker Wayland is an accounting practice that does specialise in the franchise sector and has been working with them for a, a long time. So welcome, Jessica. Hi, it's great to be with you today. <laughs> and I'll call you Jess, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay, great. <laughs> so Jess, how long have you actually um, been working with franchises and with franchisees? So I've been working with franchises for about four, four and a half years, but um, Walker Wayland have been working in this space for... Ooh, 15 plus years. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and I've been working with franchisors and franchisees across that whole time frame. So, yeah, mm -hmm. it's been really good. Okay, great. And so during that time, tell me, what sort of trends have you seen um, in, you know, from a financial point of view occur in the actual franchise sector? So a lot of the trends that um, I've been seeing is obviously economy worldwide is kind of going down and a lot of retail sector and things are being affected. So with a lot of franchisees or people newly looking into buying a franchise they they're trying to buy themselves a job to get out of another industry and when they come to see us um even if everything is negative at the net profit line of their their financial statements but um they're, they're, they're wanting to buy it and the, the problem with that is if you buy in and your net profit is negative then it's costing you money every year to run it and although the sales figure might look great if your gross profit's not you know, a high number, then you've got not a lot of um, room to pay rent and, and wages. And, and a lot of the time they forget that if they take a wage out for a manager or something like mm -hmm. that, that means they don't get any income. And if, if the net profit at the end of the year is zero, then they've effectively worked for free or for paying their employees. Mm. And they come to us at the end of their you know, first year and, and they're, they're really disillusioned with why is it so expensive and, and they, they're a franchise. And why aren't I and making money? Why aren't I always I making money? Buying into the deal. Mm. Yeah, and so we, we have to remind them that, you know, yes, yeah, so franchise franchisors take care of marketing and things like that, but not local stuff. And they really need to work on getting their presence known in their local area and they, they need to work on that so that when they build their, their top line, they start building their bottom line. And, and a lot of them are focused on stripping out expenses um, but they, they need to be wary of, of stripping them um, just for the sake of stripping them out. They need to look at why are they spending that much on each thing. And, mm -hmm. um, and being able to work with franchisees across that space has been really, really interesting. Um, on the flip side, the franchisors have also obviously been trending downwards in yeah. sales and things like that. So some franchisors have just been trying to open extra locations to get that huge hit of money that they get when they get their franchise franchise or fee. However, some of them are actively, some of the franchisors I work with are actively trying to help their franchisees do better. So, Which is saying, great because it really, the more it can be a collaborative partnership, the better it is for everyone, right? Absolutely, yeah. because if the franchisee makes lots of money, the franchisor makes money anyway right. because their fees are normally based on their sales mm -hmm. um, or their gross profits. So um, that automatically helps the franchisor earn more money and the franchisee ends up with more money, so they're happy as well. So we've been working with a few systems and, and helping them um, track franchisees and how they're going and who do they track against. And, and we've, um, yeah, that, that's the biggest kind of trends I've seen. In terms of... Um, again, because of the economy and people trying to buy themselves jobs. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I have seen, which is really unfortunate, and we have advised people not to go ahead and they've ignored our advice and gone ahead with it, we've seen agreements that are just not yeah. standard at all. And so tell me a bit about that because whenever you're considering on buying a franchise or if you're looking to update your lease or maybe you're already a franchisee moving from one particular area to another, like selling the area territory you've got and buying into another area, it's really important to get someone qualified, an accountant, to have a look over those agreements because sometimes things aren't all that they you, you think they are. So what are some of the things that you've seen, Jess? Yeah, so, so kind of a standard agreement is, is very thick. That's yeah. a really big flag initially. If I'm getting something that's two pages, then it's not being prepared by a franchise lawyer. Mm -hmm. And so automatically I know there's certain clauses in there that they haven't been given or there's no thought about. And then, you know, then they have to look to the law as to what, what goes on there. Mm -hmm. And that can be really scary because the franchisee doesn't know what they're in for. And they say to me, yep, it's got a franchise percentage. Yep, it's got an exit fee. Um, but that's all it has. There's, there's nothing about disputes, nothing like that. So um, first up, it's it's very concerning that I have seen quite a few recently that are just one or two pages long. Mm -hmm. It's it's almost like a snapshot, and it, it's not it's not a proper agreement. And they 
they're willing to sign it and we tell them that, you know, you should get proper legal, franchise-specific legal advice on it because it, yeah, it's, it's very yeah. scary. And, I mean, some people don't take your advice and go ahead and sign anyway, which is a big risk. Yeah. And then some do listen to you, which yes. is... <laughs> yeah, which is great because then yeah. they don't end up, you know, a year and a half down the track with a whole lot of problems and no way to get out of it. The other thing I've noticed is some of the more dodgy agreements that I've seen they spell agreement wrong on the cover page and things like that. I mean, that's a red flag. If it's prepared by a lawyer, if it's proper part of a system, they're at least going to spell check their cover page. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah. Okay, so some simple things simple to look things, for as yeah. well. It, yeah, it looks absolutely. like it's cut and paste. It probably is cut and paste. Cut and, paste. and at that okay. point, you know, when there's any issues, there's going to be big problems. And, and also um, franchise agreements which have... So normally you would have a marketing fee and you would normally have a franchise fee, but then if there's five or six other admin fees or other fees and, and if they don't know what they are, so I ask them, okay, do you know what this is for? What is it covering? Have they told you what you'll receive for this? And sometimes there is a good reason for it because they cover, you know, international telephone calls. They do it through their own system and things like that. But majority of the time they're not sure what it's for. It doesn't really specify in the agreement and that's a bit of a flag because most systems don't have all these sure. additional amounts. So it's okay to have those extra fees so long as so long as you're really aware of what those ex extra fees actually cover off yeah, and that, that's a legitimate reason because otherwise there's no way, if you don't even have the agreement up front, there's no way you're going to be able to read your P&L yeah, properly exactly. anyway. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and it can be very, um, it can be a big issue when you get to the end of your term if you've had this fee that you're supposed to be paid and you thought it was for getting out so when you when you renew you have mm -hmm. another franchise payment to make sure. and if you've been paying this weird little fee and that's supposed to cover that but in fact it doesn't and it never actually said that it did then that that's a bit of a, a sticking point so definitely if there's anything other than just a standard franchise fee on on sales or percentage of gross profit or something like that and a marketing levy mm -hmm. if there's anything else just to make sure you find out what they're really for that's right and so you can actually help them walk away and wa can actually help them either negotiate those uh, those agreements yep. um and if those aren't negotiable then at least understand exactly what everything is for so you're yep. going in with your eyes really open yeah and Absolutely. obviously open eyes mean the best um chance and likelihood of the business going very well because yeah. an informed franchisee is a lot better off than one that's not. Yeah, absolutely. So um, that's that's kind of the the biggest couple of trends we've seen mm. recently. Okay, so you also work with franchisees, um, you know, where things aren't going as well as what they, they want to and they do come for you not at the start of their um, term but during for financial advice and accounting advice and things like that. So having someone in their back pocket like, like you, Jess, so what are some of the things that you've seen that you've really been able to assist them with to improve their business? So... We've got a new kind of system that we've done. That we've been working with um, for our firm and using for franchisees, where we kind of meet with them and monitor their results and, and go through kind of a profit and loss. Because by and large, a lot of the franchisees that we see that have come and they're halfway through their term, something like that, they don't understand their profit and loss. And so, for them, when I talk about sales versus what they take home, they assume that's the same figure, which is not the case. So, mm -hmm. a bit of training initially in terms of how to understand what these figures mean, what does it mean for them and what does it mean for their business? And then from there going, okay, these are the figures we're starting with. These are some things that you actually need to work towards because that's an industry standard target, for example, for mm -hmm. you know a hairdressing salon or something like that. We can get industry targets for most industries. Yeah, yeah. So, um, And that's across the board, not just franchise specific. So when the franchisee comes in, we can go, okay, this is where you're starting, but actually you need to be more closer to this percentage which is a lot lower than what you're at we'll work with you for some strategies on how to reduce that number um, whether it be rent or wages things like that rent you know we can get in external negotiators to negotiate lease terms and, and talk to the franchise or about head leases and all mm -hmm. of that kind of thing um wages we, we look at rosters and how many people have they got on? Is that reasonable? Is that too many? If it's not too many, why aren't the sales there? Um, and then we, we look at um, things like their their bookkeeping fees, their accounting fees, all of that. Are they paying too much for that? Is there something that they can use themselves that will be easier? Mm -hmm. And we do a lot of training. Depending um, on how much room they've got to manoeuvre yes. as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So obviously some have got very little room to to move and, yes. and some have got quite a lot that they can play with yeah. that they can either either cut right back on their uh, on their costs to increase their profit significantly yeah. or they can invest some of that 
some of that money into ways to actually grow the business yeah, and absolutely expand. i mean mm. some of that might be as simple as some sales training for the team because sure. they're just they're just not across how to do it correctly or to get enough mm -hmm. sales in mm -hmm. the door which is something that we don't do but we organize external yeah. people to come in and help with so yeah. yeah that's that's kind of what we do with them great that's awesome and so the thing is i mean whilst you don't deal from an operational point of view or sales or leadership or the people management or all of that sort of thing you can outsource but it's yeah. not just about them understanding what percentage or what dollars that they're spending per month on those types of things it's actually what makes up yeah those do and not just what makes up the dollars and the percentage but the triggers and the things that they do actually day to day the behaviors that actually impact yeah. those figures and their and those those dollars yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. so if the starting point is working out how they um, how much they understand and mm -hmm. then getting them to understand what it means and then working with them to change it and and as you said working with them on little operational things that will have not a big effect in their day-to-day -day business but a huge effect to their dollars and percentages yeah. in their profit and loss. Because at the end of the day, the franchisee, whilst you're looking at the percentage, at the end of the day, they bank dollars, yeah. not percentage at yeah. the end of the day. Yeah. Well, Jess, thanks very much for being with us. Yeah, really. And if you're looking for any um, support financially and advice, whether that's to be with your agreements um, or your day-to-day -day profitability, month-to-month -month profitability, then certainly um, you know, contact Jess and contact Walker Whale and WA. And have you got a number that they can contact um, the office on, Jess? Yeah, so if you guys would like to get in contact, we'd be happy to speak with you and, and go through some things with you. Um, the number here is uh, 089364 and um, yeah, just ask for me. Great, fantastic. Thanks a lot, Jess. No worries. Thank okay, you. Okay, bye for now, bye. everyone.